Morning everyone, thanks for watching today. I uh, wanted to bring you an episode just going over the reverse kit that I mounted in here. There's uh, not a whole lot of information out there on installing it. The instructions that it came with said basically go YouTube it. Um, and I did and so far I've seen two videos on it now. I saw uh, a series that Cars and Cameras put on and then just recently saw one that Redbeard's Garage put on and i saw two different ways of doing it and i guess i'm showing you another and then i feel like they both kind of left some details out that are important on this installation so i'm gonna go ahead and cover those as well um first up here it is the installation i didn't get anything on video basically wes and i were working on it no one was holding the camera and before we knew it it was done so i took uh down on the bottom bracket here I put a couple of tabs, welded it to the, uh, the frame, added a little piece of inch and a quarter or inch and a half tube to space it up a little bit, and that was pretty simple and straightforward. From the back, <coughs> excuse me, I took a piece of three quarter inch hydraulic pipe and basically cut a little section of it here, then notched it. Put another piece on there and used the factory bracket that the reverse kit came with. This allows me to pivot up and down um, so I can set my chain tension here, which is apparently a little bit tight. I need to readjust that down a little bit. So that gives me the ability to tension the chain back here. And then I've got it sprocket driven. Um, on Redbeard's garage, he used the driven clutch from the torque converter to drive it. I have used the sprocket instead. The reason why I did that is because after researching um, anything I could on this reverse box, it said that it's actually rated for 2,900 RPM. The torque converters, at the very end, it should be about a one-to-one -one gear ratio, and these motors do 3,600 RPM. That's un that's if they're still governed. If you've got an ungoverned motor, you might be doing, you know, 8,500 RPM, depending on how much you've uh, built into that motor. So, with that said, I've got a, a nine-tooth sprocket on my torque converter, sending it out to a 37-tooth sprocket um, on the reverse box, which really reduces my RPM on the transmission. So it's going to hopefully wear this thing out. It's not going to, or it's not going to wear it out as quick. It's not going to cook the oil as quick. I'm operating the reverse box on a much slower speed. So I can still change my final drive RPM by putting a bigger sprocket up here on the reverse box for the output, or I could probably step this sprocket down 10 to 37 I'm sorry, 9 to 37 is a lot of gear reduction. Um, this thing's made for going up steep inclines and hauling weight around. So um, slow is better for me. But again, I don't know that I would want to run straight off of the, the driven clutch for the torque converter. Just simply because the RPM is going to be too high. So just a quick look at the bracketry. Uh, it's very simple, just bolt the brackets on, and after everything's bolted, go ahead and weld it down. And then this back one, um, it, like I said, it's just for adjusting the, the chain tension. Um, and that was it. I, I didn't put a nut or spacers or anything on that sprocket. I just put a clamping collar on it. That's um, all you need. You can see there that the keyway shaft does not go all the way through, so any sprockets that have an an integral key or the key is built onto the sprocket is not going to work for this reverse kit. Um, same thing on the sprocket in there. The you cannot use a integral keyed sprocket. So that being said, the next thing that comes up is this shifter assembly. Uh, and really, none of the videos I think did a very good job going over this because this was a pain. Um, I found that it's best to go to the other end where the shifter is and go ahead and attach your cables. 
select a gear, I put it in reverse, and then I came back here and I made sure that this was in reverse. I bolted all my bracketry up. I fished the cables through, but this was not on the shaft. I waited till it was all bolted up, or I'm sorry, I waited till I had the cables set on here before putting this on. That way I knew the cables were already adjusted into drive. This was already into drive. I could just slip it on. Um, the cables don't give you much extra. This almost hits. And if I were to flip this bracket over the other way, um, it would not be long enough. Um, there's no adjustment on the other end of the cables. So it was really close here. And when it shifts in reverse, it gets pretty close over here. Um, so I found it's best to assemble all your cables, assemble it to the shifter mechanism here, get it, and then, you know, slide that on, then, you know, have already, I'm sorry, already have all of this pushed through. Now, one of these nuts was already pre-stripped for me. I think it was this one. Um, so I ended up having to make sure to tighten this down and this, that is where it finally got a thread on it to hang. So. I never finished mounting the front of it. Um, it's just dangling up here. And what I want to do is basically put it there, um, but I need a lot longer set of cables. So I ordered a set of 120 inch cables. Um, hopefully that's going to do it. On that end, there's no adjustment. It's just the, uh, the sheathing end, and then there's a ball on the end of the cable. And then on this end of the cable, you've got the, the bent section and you've got the adjustment threads on there. And then again, you got the little ball drum and for the cable. So I hope this information helps. Um, other than that, I can't really think if there was anything else to it. Uh, just get a sprocket on the input shaft, get a sprocket on the output shaft. Uh, gearing for me, this, this thing, uh, does about 11 to 13 miles an hour. I do have more sprockets coming to fidget with some of the gearing a little bit. Um, I'm gonna, I guess I'll go over and take over to the computer. I've got a spreadsheet that I drew up real quick just to help me figure out what my engine speed and all that's gonna equate to in vehicle speed here. So let's go over to that real quick. All right, so here's a, a quick look at the spreadsheet, and I'll give you a little explanation here. So first up, I have whatever your input speed's gonna be. It's gonna be your engine speed. Um, I've calculated out a few different gear options, uh, a few different engine speeds, stuff like that. So then I have, I'm just assuming it's one-to-one -one on the torque converter, so nothing's here. Now the sprocket coming off the torque converter, I've got a few options here. Then the sprocket going into the rear, uh, the reverse box goes here. Now the reverse box, the information I found is that it's got a 1 to 1.13 forward gear ratio and it's got a 1 to 1.26 reverse gear ratio. Um, I'm looking for speed in, in drive, not reverse, so I've got that put in here. Then we have the output of the, trans, of the gear box, that sprocket, and then we've got our sprocket on the axle. I've got my tire circumference in feet. So basically this is, uh, I'm running a 24 inch tire. It's two feet, two times pi is, which is 3.14, comes out to 6.28. So that's in feet. If you're gonna do this in inches, you're gonna wanna convert it into feet and find your actual um, tire, or your tire circumference here. Then converting this into minutes to hours, we got times 60 here. That's because uh, this is going to be all in RPM. We need to make that hours. And then this is in feet. We need to make it miles. So it divides by that. And then we've got our final speed here. So just to, let's see here. If I click here, we've got, I guess you can't quite see what the math is. There you go. So we've got our basically sprocket speed, or engine RPM times sprocket speed, divided by the secondary sprocket speed, multiplied, or I'm sorry, divided by the gear ratio, multiplied by the sprocket on the back of the transmission, divided by the sprocket on the axle, 
multiplied by the tire circumference, multiplied by time, and divided by 5,280 feet per mile. So there's the equation there. So uh, going with a 37 tooth sprocket and two foot tires, it kind of you can kind of show see what my end up speeds are going to be here. I did 5,000 RPM because that would be an ungoverned engine, um, 3,600 RPM for governed engine, and that's how I worked out the gearing. Um, for some easier numbers to hit, let's say we're running 3,600, and uh, most common sprockets out there are 10. Then I've got the old quad sprocket on here, so that was a 37. I've got a 17 tooth coming. That was the biggest I could find in a standard um, B-type 5 8 shaft sprocket for a 41 chain. 1.13, that's pretty consistent. Um, again, we could go 10 here. And then just to show you, even if we went with a, a 72 tooth sprocket here, which is about the biggest you'll find. And that, that was too big of a sprocket to be able to fit on the rover. Um, you can see that comes out to 18 and a half miles an hour here. Uh, change this into something you'd more typically see. Let's go 44 tooth, changes it to 30 miles an hour. So you get a lot of ability to play with your gearing here. And then the, the smallest sprocket I could find here was eight. Um, that changes us to 24 miles an hour. But you're gonna wanna maybe create a spreadsheet for yourself. I uh, would be willing to share this, and if you guys leave in the comments a way that I can share this file, then you can have a little spreadsheet to do what I'm doing. I, this might not work for people who either aren't using a gearbox and then you know have the extra sprockets because of the gearbox. Um, but just a general, this is how I'm figuring it out. Uh, hope that helps. All right, so on the last ride, we had a few little issues and now that I got some, some of the kinks worked out, and just to show you what it's got with this gearing, let's go for a little ride here. Oh, we ended up cold, cold one this morning. So might have to let the engine warm up a second. tank vent. That might help. Let's see.
thing I like about the uh, Juggernaut torque converter is I get some engine brake help, which was not the case with the other torque converter, or at least the, the driver cam led. And these rovers are very rattly. If you have one, you, you already know this, but that's the bed rattling around behind me. Um, hopefully I can get some rubber or something to help dampen that in the near future. All right, the scary part. Will the little go-kart brakes hang on for me? Everybody, thanks for watching. Hope to see you next time.